There are some strange time periods in the Bible. There are certain times in the Bible where the world the people are living in is sometimes like a fairy tale. And this is where Hollywood gets their ideas for the fantasy genre and the science fiction movies. And one of those time periods is called the Millennial Reign. The Bible gives us some amazing descriptions of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you aren't familiar when this reign will begin, I'll take a minute to tell you. As you know, we are in what many people call the church age. And at this time, God has quit dealing with the Jews. And they're blind in part because they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ is placed into the body of Christ which is the church, and here soon we are going to hear the Lord descend from heaven with a shout. We're going to be caught up together with him and with the resurrected saints to meet the Lord in the air. After this, the world will go through the worst time that it's ever seen, a time people refer to as the tribulation. The Bible also calls it the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. And at the end of this tribulation, Jesus Christ comes back with ten thousands of his saints to take over and become King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is when he will set up this millennial kingdom. So number one, what is the millennium? It is a one thousand year period where Jesus Christ rules and reigns as King. And it's a time of perfect peace. If you find yourself doubting the millennial reign, I can show you very clear verses and Revelation chapter 20, verses 2 through 7, and watch how each verse says 1,000 years. So Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, well, start in verse 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and i saw thrones and they set upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, that but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So obviously the Lord wants us to know that this is a literal 1,000 years. He just said it in six verses here. So in case you don't believe in the millennium, there's a good reason why you should. Now number two, who won't be in the millennium? Well, we just saw from verse 1 there in Revelation 20, the devil will be chained in the bottomless pit. Imagine a world without the God of this world, as Paul calls the devil. Imagine a world without the prince of the power of the air. Imagine a righteous government with no satanic influence. Imagine the safety of your family. No one will be able to say, the devil made me do it. The devil is going to be chained up. And in Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 2, it shows us that unclean spirits won't be there. Imagine the music that will be played during this time. No influence from unclean spirits. Imagine the friendship and the fellowship. You won't have unclean spirits causing men to fight and bicker with each other. Uh, no, in, no unclean spirits to influence mass shootings and suicide and sex trafficking and drive-bys and abortions and pervert marriages. That's who won't be in the millennium. Now let's see who will be in the millennium. We see Jews inheriting the promised land. They're going to get their land in the millennium. In the millennial kingdom, the Jews will finally get the land promised to them. And many people think God's completely done with Israel. 
and that the church has replaced Israel. But that's not so. Uh, you know, Israel is no better than the church. God doesn't love them more. And an unsaved Jew is going to go to hell just like an unsaved Gentile. But God's not done with Israel. In Romans eleven twenty five, it says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So you see, God isn't through with Israel. God promised the land to Abraham, and they're going to get it. Now, who else will be there? Church age saints, that's us. The ones who suffered with Jesus Christ will get to also reign, according to 2 Timothy 2 and verse 12, which says, If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Now, the ones who didn't suffer will also be there, but they're not going to be ruling over as many cities. Church age saints who didn't suffer still get to go in. So all church age saints are present, but don't you want to be ruling over cities? But who else? Tribulation saints who were martyred for Jesus Christ will be there. Look in verse 4 of that chapter we've already looked at, Revelation 20. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sit upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So they chose death over sinful pleasure and selling out to the Antichrist. So tribulation saints will be there. Tribulation saints who survived the tribulation will also go right on into the kingdom. Nations that were good to the Jew will also enter into the millennial kingdom. In Matthew twenty five thirty one through 46, we read, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and come unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they answer then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So here you have the Lord bringing people in to the kingdom that helped his brethren during the time of Jacob's trouble. So that's who else will be there. And also Old Testament saints will be there. In Luke twenty two thirty, the Lord's disciples are told they shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So imagine being with saints from all ages. Now next, number three, where will the kingdom be? We've seen what is the millennium, who won't be there, who will be there. Now, where will the kingdom be? The Lord will reign from Jerusalem. In Isaiah 65, 18 through 19, it says, But be ye glad and rejoice forever, 
in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Jesus Christ will reign from Jerusalem, not New York, not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, or Atlanta, or Miami, but from Jerusalem. And all nations will come to worship him. In Zechariah fourteen seventeen, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if the nations don't come to worship before the Lord, they won't get any rain for their crops. They will either serve him or lick the dust. He will be absolute dictator, and dictatorship is only good when you have a sinless, almighty, all-knowing being as the dictator. He doesn't come to take sides. He comes to take over. But what will the kingdom be like? Honestly, like what you see in a fairy tale. Uh, these things aren't talked about much because people want the Bible to fit their life today. They only want to approach the Bible through a practical standpoint. So what will the kingdom be like? Well, church-age saints, that's us, will be walking around in glorified bodies. And imagine a place with millions of people walking around who never sleep, can't die, can't be wounded, have the mind of Christ, can walk through solid objects, can appear and disappear at will, can transport from one location to another at the speed of light or faster, and they're also sinless beings. No one can get by with anything. And if Jesus Christ on the throne wasn't enough, you have millions of people who have been made like him walking around and ruling over cities. Now, Old Testament saints walking around and talking with each other. Imagine the Apostle Paul talking to Jeremiah. Imagine Elijah talking to John the Baptist. Imagine Jeremiah, Isaiah, and the Apostle Peter in a room together. I'm not so sure if the Old Testament saints will have glorified bodies at this point yet, but who knows? I don't believe they are part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ didn't start until after Jesus Christ died and resurrected. And when the rapture happens, it is the dead in Christ that rise first and get glorified bodies. But maybe at Jesus' resurrection, he already gave the Old Testament saints glorified bodies, possibly, but who knows? And next there'll be pre-flood ages isaiah 65 20 says there shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that hath not filled his days for the child shall die an hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed so one hundred years old will be considered young at this time this also shows you that not everyone's going to have glorified bodies maybe someone will surpass the age of methuselah who lived to be 969 but imagine seven, eight, nine hundred year old people walking around. Sounds like something from a fairy tale. But people in natural bodies will still be having children who will have their own free will to choose or reject Jesus Christ. This means the population will be a lot more than it is now, with people continuing to have children who just aren't dying off. And people will still be building houses and planting gardens. And the curse will be lifted. If you read in Amos nine thirteen through 15, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. In Isaiah sixty-five twenty-one through 22, And they shall build houses, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. I like that. For the days of a tree are the days of my people. Isaiah 55, 12, and 13. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you've seen movies where the trees seem to come alive. Things like that. 
Isaiah 55, 13, instead of the thorn, there shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar, there shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So perfect weather, perfect food, easy, enjoyable work. Everyone will know who Jesus Christ is and the Lord will be our teacher. As it says in Micah 4, 2. Now Jeremiah 31, 34, it says, And they shall teach... No more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them and to the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Hebrews 8, 11, And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Zechariah thirteen three, And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy then his father and his mother that beget him shall say unto him thou shalt not live for thou speakest lies in the name of the lord and his father and his mother that beget him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth so you see there's going to be no need to prophesy everybody's going to know who the lord is they're going to see him they're going to know all about him they're going to know that they got to come to him uh, Micah 4 2 shows us, and many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now the animals will have the curse lifted during this time. If you look at Isaiah 11 6 through 8, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. So imagine being able to have certain wild animals as pets. Imagine all the animals that men thought were extinct that the Lord may bring back, or even animals no one has discovered yet that God may preserve or something and bring into the millennial kingdom. So just amazing things to think about when you think about just the animal life. You know, you're going to have animals together <clears throat> that have never been together, living together and on, you know, the same continent there. Uh, no fear or anxiety in the millennium. In Zephaniah 3.13, it says, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. And also all one language, just like the Tower of Babel. In Zephaniah 3.9, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him, with one consent but now but how the kingdom ends is even stranger because with no influence from unclean spirits or from the devil for 1,000 years because as you know the devil is chained up and is in the bottomless pit but then he's going to be loosed and even after a thousand years sitting under the Lord Jesus Christ with no satanic influence, the devil is still able to gather an army as the sand of the sea. In Revelation 27 through 8, it says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So he's still going to be able to gather an army together. But it ends just as quick or faster as he gathered them. Because the Lord just brings down a fire and it devours them. And then it's over. You know, you're going to have the white throne judgment and then eternity. Not going to have to worry about the devil no more. He's going to be cast into the lake of fire. But if you want to be sure to go into this millennial kingdom... You need to be sure that you're saved. Paul tells us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Christ died. He died by shedding his blood, 
and he died shedding his blood for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. You need to be saved because you're a sinner. The only way to get your sins forgiven is to believe on Jesus Christ. Believe on him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for sin. So the Bible makes it clear. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.